Okay, the first thing we must do is we must inspect our models. That means we have to take a look at the teeth. Make sure they're not broken. Make sure they fit together without any gaps. Make sure that the bottom and the top are flat. In which this case they aren't because they just came out of the mold. So we're going to make them flat using the model trimmer. Now when we trim it, we must make sure that the top and the bottom are parallel to the occlusal plane. As we learned last semester, the occlusal plane is the plane that is created by the dentition when you consider them as a whole. So we can take a look at the prepared models and these models also must be free from chips, bubbles, etc. So we put them together make sure they come together in a solid stop there shouldn't be any rocking any moving they should just lock together these also have don't have a perfectly flat bottom so we must also uh, hit these with a model trimmer keeping the top and the bottom parallel to the uh, occlusal plane now these models will be mounted on an articulator this one is a handout you have the uh, Ivoclar. So the first step is we're going to mount these two models. These are the unprepared models. These models will be cross mounted with the prepared models. And cross mounting means that we'll be able to take these models off the articulator and place any of these back on so that we can wax these against the unprepared and the mandibular over the upper unprepared and then we're going to wax the two prepared together okay just to illustrate how we're going to cross mount these models First what we're going to do is we're going to take the two unprepared models. This is the mandibular, this is the maxillary. So we're going to glue them together and we're going to mount them on the articulator like this. After we mounted it, we're going to take the unprepared upper off and we're going to put the prepared upper on the mounted unprepared lower and then we're going to mount that against that once that sets then we're going to remove the unprepared mandibular and we'll put in the prepared mandibular making sure that everything is together properly we will mount these so once we mounted these then we'll have the ability to take these models and switch them out as we want to because they're already mounted we don't have to worry about remounting and again and again, again so we're just the first um, thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the unprepared upper and we're going to wax the prepared lower then we're going to take these models off and we're going to put the unprepared lower against the prepared upper like this we're going to put these on the articulator and then we're going to wax the unprepared upper against the prepared upper against the unprepared lower so let's move on and next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these models and flatten the um, bottom of the uh, bases ok 
Okay, so we're going to be trimming the model. So the first thing we do is we must wet the model. Then after we wet the model, sometimes when models are very dry, you gotta wet them quite a bit. So we're going to make sure that this platform is perfectly level. This should be at uh, about zero degrees for this particular purpose. So we are going to push the model against the trimmer with our fingers. Now we do not put our weight behind it and try to do it this way. Because if we slip, our fingers are going right into the blade. So what we do is we're going to use our thumbs and use our opposing fingers to squeeze the thumb to squeeze against the model trimmer. And not squeeze too hard because we only need to flatten them. Unless we need to actually straighten them, we don't have to put too much pressure on them. We still need the bases so that we can mount against them. So once we uh, ground it flat, we look at it, make sure it's parallel to the occlusal plane, and we move on to the next model. Remember to wet each model, and if they're very dry, wet them very well. Otherwise, the grindings will stick to the model and it's going to be a little bit difficult to remove them. You'll probably have to steam clean them. So again, using our thumb. Squeeze against it a little bit and make sure it's flat. Double check. At this point we can uh, take the other model and see if it's parallel to the occlusal plane. Do the lower. Pressure. Make sure it's flat. Double check. This one is a little bit canted this way. So we're going to try to straighten it a little bit, which means we're going to press it a little bit more on this side. Double check. That's about right. So now we're going to do an axillary prepared model. Double check. Do the mandibular prepared model. This one's a little bit thick, so we can take a little bit away. Just make sure that you don't take away too much. Make sure you keep it flat. I will double check, make sure the bases are parallel. And they are. So now we'll double check the cross mounting how that goes. So this is the unprepared against the prepared. That looks pretty good. And the other unprepared against the prepared. And that looks pretty good. So now we're finished with the bases. So at this point we need to dry the models. Without drying the models, we're not going to be able to glue them securely together because they're wet.
and hot glue does not stick very well to wet models. Let's uh, drill the holes in the model. We have to make sure it's uh, completely clean. The uh, holes need to be drilled on the ridge because that's where the model is the thickest. So we're going to drill four holes. Two on the distal of the canines. Making sure that we push the drill all the way down so that the little protrusions on the Pindex pins can be countersunk into the model. Countersunk means so that the little uh, protrusions on the Pindex pins can be below the surface, the flat surface of the model. So you see they're kind of wide apart. This creates a stability to the model in case it comes off and we have to return them onto the articulator. Now these models, we're not going to make them removable since this is an occlusion class. The occlusal surfaces of the teeth must be kept exactly the same throughout the semester. So we cannot remove these models and put them back and remove them. These pins are just as a assurance that in case they happen to come off, we can return them to pretty much the exact same place. If we keep taking them on and off, they may become um, unstable so that they won't be able to be returned to exactly the place. Thus, the contact points on the occlusion when we're waxing, they're going to be different. So it's going to be next to impossible to keep them stable. Now what I like to do is I like to make a little vial out of wax. It's like a little dish that we can put some glue in. And we can use this to, to dip our little uh, dowel pins into it and then we can glue them into their holes. So if we have the um, plastic sleeves on it, it can act like a handle so we can just dip it into the glue a little bit. Make sure it is, this is way too much glue here, you see? We don't want too much glue, just enough. Because if we put too much glue, that's what happens, you see? So then we, we have to take a paper towel and kind of wipe it off a little bit. So we can do the next one. Just dip the tip into it a little bit, just like that kind of work it in there. If it's still too much glue we can always just wipe it off. We don't want too much. Now remember the models should be dry when we do this because glues tend not to stick to wet models. Just a little bit of glue. Okay. 
we can do it like this too but it's just much more difficult to hold and then if you get any glue on the top portion it's gonna be hard to push these down onto it and they won't seat fully because of that uh, wide area on the plastic sleeves so I like to just put the plastic sleeves on and it will serve me as a uh, handle for the pin This is the upper, so I'm going to put these upside down. And we'll use them as a handle. These aren't done yet. Okay. So these are done. Now we're ready for the next step, which is articulation. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the models. In this case, we're going to use a Hanau articulator. As you can see, it's a little bit different than yours. You're using an Evoclar. These uses metal plates and it's um, kind of an old school articulator but essentially the steps will be the same. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this compound. It's a rubbery sticky compound that we're going to use to fix the models onto it. So the first step is we're going to put the models together and then we're going to fix them with a hot glue gun. So, when we glue them together, we don't need to put glue all over the place. We're just going to put it in two spots in the posterior and one spot in the anterior. another stick so then we're gonna put another one in the posterior here just a little bit we don't need to overload it and now we will wait for it to cool holding the models together until they cool off after they cool, uh, we can start mounting them. The way we know that it's cold is we can touch them with our fingernails and once we don't leave a depression in the glue, then it's completely solidified. Once it starts solidifying, we can carefully put it down and just let it cool off. Okay, so now this is solidified. As we can see, it's pretty hard. 
we're going to place this so that the bottom pins kind of stick into this compound. Like so. Now on your articulator you're going to have a pin in this area and that pin is going to stick right to the center midline between the lower anteriors and that's exactly 110 millimeters from the center of the condyle to that spot. You're also going to measure with a rubber band the, from the center of the condyle 40 millimeters down to the occlusal plane and that will give you the level of the um, Bonwell, bon, Bonwell Triangle. Okay, so it's time to articulate. As we can see, we have a little bit of a sticky compound here. We're going to put this to the bottom of the articulator. Kind of build it up a little bit so that we have some playroom with the models. And we're going to take these models and we're going to stick it right onto the bottom of the articulator. Try to center it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the lower anterior teeth so that they are 110 millimeters away from the center of the condyle. So on this articulator we'll have to approximate. On your articulator you're going to have a little pin attached to the incisal pin and that will point the lower anteriors exactly where they're supposed to be. So the pin is going to be right at the midline of the lower anterior incisal area. On this one we kind of measure it from the top. Well, I'll put 110 millimeters right there and it looks like we're about there. So the next measurement will be 40 millimeters down from the center of the condyle which is 4 centimeters. So we'll measure that with a millimeter ruler. So that's 40 millimeters. So with this articulator we'll have to drop it down quite a bit more so we'll put this right about at 40 millimeters that's right on the top of the rubber band so we'll have to adjust the models so that the model the occlusal plane is as close as we can get it to 40 millimeters and it's about there at this point we can take away the rubber band so that it doesn't get in our way of articulating and open up the articulator now we're going to take our bowl and our mixing spatula and we're going to put some mounting stone right in a bowl and you'll have to eventually get 
uh, the right judgment accordingly according to the space we have here so I would say that'll probably be about three scoops of uh, stone So that's about three scoops of stone and we're going to mix this. If your stone looks like this, it's too much water. So we'll have to add a little bit more stone to it to make it a little bit harder. Or I should say a little bit thicker. It should look like thick sour cream. So if you look at it, You should be able to stack the stone so it doesn't lose its shape. So now we'll open the articulator and we're going to put the stone right on top of the maxillary model. Try to be as neat as you can be. stack it up a little bit to make sure that the articulator sits in it. If it doesn't sit in it, you might have to quickly mix some additional stone. This looks like just about the right amount of stone. So now we're going to take our fingers and we're going to kind of adjust the stone. Any extra stone we can put back in the bowl for later use. But the first thing to do is to remove the stone that's excess. And we'll have to work quickly with this because it sets very quickly. So Additional stone should be put on the top with this articulator, with yours. Uh, it probably won't need to be done because you don't have this hole on top. So what I do is I like to wet my fingers so that quickly shape the stone and it can slide on the surface of the stone. It can slide on the surface of the stone and it will allow you to shape it properly. I shouldn't say properly but uh, neatly. I like to use, as you can see, I like to use my thumb because it has a good curvature so that we can shape the sides of the articulation almost like sculpting out of uh, clay. The cleaner your fingers and the wetter easier it will slide along the stone. The neater we can make it now, the easier it will be to really smooth it out later. So as we can see now, it's nice and neat.
take some additional pieces and fill in any missing areas. So how do I look in the back? So that I can see any imperfections. And we can take a plaster knife. And we can even up the mountain stone on top here. Make sure you work in a way that disturbs the stone as little as possible while you're working on it. Because at this point in time, it's still very fragile, so you can crack it and then you have to start all, all over again. Because you don't want any cracks in it. If you have cracks in it, it might crack all the way through while you're doing your wax ups. And then it will ruin your project to the point where you have to start over. Okay, now that the model is hard, we're going to flip the articulator over, like so going to open it very carefully so that we don't dislodge the lower model then we will remove the compound and as we can see we we'll have the space here now so we're going to fill that with mounting stone also we'll open it up and we'll mix up some more stone. Now as we can see we have a lot less space there so most likely we'll have to mix about uh, we'll have to mix about two scoops. So this is about two scoops right here. Again, as we mix it, going to mix it like a consistency of sour cream. Then we open up the articulator. So now we see that over here, we don't have holes the bottom so what we have to do is we have to make sure we fill these holes up with stone so what we'll have to do is kind of press it in there with this stone we have to kind of work quickly because it sets extremely fast we're going to put it models try to smear it on there as neatly as we can looks like we mixed just enough and we squeeze it together sometimes we may have to vibrate it in and of course we'll use our thumbs and our fingers to even out the stone with the articulator. As we can see, it's already starting to set, so we have to work quickly. The good thing right now is that your, the stone on the bottom will keep everything from moving. Sometimes you, let's use this spatula take some of this out because our fingers will fit in here. So we'll just put our fingers here, smooth out the stone quickly before it sets. Let's wash our hands quickly. And do some additional Okay. 
and look at the bottom here. Let's see, and some more stone there. Turn it around. Kind of smear the stone off of there. Smooth, and now we wait for this to also set up. Okay, the next step is we're going to wet this glue and detach the models, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take off the top model and attach our prepared model to the unprepared lower. So we can take a Murphy knife and kind of flick these off. And loosen up the uh, glue. This glue pops right off once you wet the models, which is why you should have dry models when you're using the hot glue. Sometimes when the models are dry the glue can stick more and you might have to wet the models twice. Loosen up the bottom portion too. Now we should be able to pull it apart and carefully nudge the glue off so that we don't break the teeth. So here's our mounting. Make sure the pins are set to zero. going to detach the top and wait for this model to dry a little bit. Okay, once the model dried a little, we're going to Take this off and um, clean up the articulator. Make sure there's no pieces of stone left on it. Then we're going to take the model and attach the upper prepared model. Now before you attach it, just check with me so that I can make sure that everything is occluding properly. Once that happened, then we're going to take the hot glue and again put a little bit right in the back tooth. Do not touch the prepared teeth with the hot glue because it's going to break them. So one in the front and two in the back. So now we wait a little bit until it starts solidifying. Then we can put it down on the table and we'll wait for it to completely harden. You see how it pulls? You don't want to let it go before that goes away. If it pulls like this, that means it's still very flexible. So you may end up moving the model slightly if you put it down right now. 
So we wait a little bit more. Once it doesn't pull anymore, you can carefully place it down and wait for the rest of the cooling to take place. Check, make sure that it's cold. So, again, check with our fingernails. I don't see any indents, so we can put that on the articulator. Make sure that you screw it all the way down and there is no pieces of plaster stuck on the platform of the articulator. Alright, so we're going to wet this again so we can remove the glue. Carefully try the glue model. Let's wet that a little bit more. So now unscrew two models and we're going to attach the lower prepared model to the upper unprepared Table. Make sure you show it to me before you guys actually glue it together. Some of the models may have uh, nodules on them or bubbles and they may not go together properly. Again, same way, posterior tooth. And 
anterior. And posterior. Make sure on these models you do terminal teeth so that we don't destroy the prepared models. So we're going to wait a little bit till this uh, starts hardening. sure that our mounting plate is perfectly flush with the articulator base. So we'll tighten this on the bottom because the mandibular is going to go right here. So on the maxillary we have to take care that there's no stone in these places and on here there's a flash of stone right here which we will want to remove and pop this out to make absolutely sure that this seats flush against the maxillary part of the articulator make sure this is also Properly cleaned. See any stone stuff in it? Just clean it off. There's going to create problems. So now we take the articulator. This is already pulled down. So it's nice and stable. I'm going to attach maxillary part of the articulator. And now we're going to flip the articulator over. We remove some of the excess glue that may get in our way. Double check and uh, make sure that our pins don't hit the top. Now something here is definitely getting in our way. And what's getting in our way is our incisal base right there. So what we may need to do is we may need to move this out of the way. Make sure that we see it. Yours probably won't have this problem. So just going to see if I can move it back. And we notice some of our sleeves are getting in the way. That's why this isn't seating 100%. So, what we're going to do now is we are going to take these sleeves and we're going to 
cut a piece of them off. I would say we'll probably chop them in half. To do that, we can use any kind of blade. I'm using a box cutter in this case. See now they're a lot shorter, so we should be able to so double check the pin. And looks like everything's all the way closed. Now it looks like we can use uh, two scoops of stone, which is about the same as the other uh, mandibula. Run out of the way. Get hurt. Gonna open up the articulator and let's mix the stone. as much as we can then put our stone on the model quickly it's a very dry stone so it's going to absorb the whole water very quickly so we have to work fast Our little finger, just the stone here, so that's not, that fits. Nice wet hands, come back. Posterior area. You can fill up some of the stone here. And use the convexities of our fingers to make a nice. 
nice neat surface. Use some additional stone to fill deficient areas. As you can see, it's nice and neat now. We'll clean up. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these from the articulator, these models. to make these models extra neat by sanding them. So we're going to sand the mounting stone so that they're nice and smooth. So we're going to take smooth sandpaper that stands up to water and it's a 220 grit fine finish sandpaper. So the way we sand is first we wet the model and all the stone around it. And we start sanding using the curvature of our, hand, of our hands. As we saw before, we were using the curvature of our thumb to give us a nice smooth finish. So now we're going to continue and make it even smoother with the sandpaper using our fingers to follow all the curves of the mounting stone we can really smooth it down so we want to sand all along the base make sure you don't sand the teeth and along the surface of the mounting stone. You can run your finger over the stone to make sure it's smooth. Wherever it's rough, you can do some extra sanding. Wherever you have a, a higher curvature, like over here, you can use a single finger to get in there. Get it on the nice curve. You can use as many fingers or as few as you need. Stone from the surface of the face uh, and just sand it down completely. Best result you can get is if you wait until the mounting stone is completely set. When it's not completely set, the finish doesn't seem to be as smooth. If it's set like this, it's gonna feel almost like glass. With a little patience, you can get rid of all of the stone. Just make sure you do not sand the teeth. Because that will take away stone from the teeth. And it will render your model inaccurate. And you have to start over with a new model. And even sand down the base plate a little bit just to clean it up and it will make it look almost new. Make sure we get all the areas including the top.
This is our finished model. This is a good example of what I'm looking for. Smooth surfaces, round surfaces, even with the base. The occlusion comes together exactly with the incisal pen. And it should be as smooth everywhere as it is in the front. This is an example of a grade of 100%.